So welcome to my backyard. So this is the patio and uh, it's such a beautiful day that I thought we could practice out here this evening. And um, so that's what we're gonna do. Mm, welcome, <sighs> wonderful to see you all. And um, I'm just really happy to be able to lead these practices. Um, well, let's start as we almost always do by finding a nice seated posture. And once you're seated, let your eyes gently close. Once the eyes are closed, bring your awareness to your breath and begin to feel the breath as it flows in and flows out. Notice how the body reacts as you breathe in. Maybe feel a little bit of expansion in the upper part of the torso. And as you exhale, feel just a slight bit of contraction. Breathing in, feel the breath flowing in. And exhale and feel the breath flowing out. Just continue flowing in and flowing out. Just let your body breathe. Allow the breath to begin to deepen if that happens naturally, but don't force it. You may also begin to feel the breath rising and falling. Maybe rising on an inhale, or perhaps you're feeling it fall on an inhale, and then moving the other direction on the exhale. Just notice which it's doing. Let's enjoy a few more breaths flowing in and flowing out. And two more. And one more deep breath in, and then exhale and let the breath go. The next time you inhale, let your arms float up and overhead, reach up high. Now bring the palms together, then interlace the fingers, invert the palms and stretch the palms up towards the sky. Stretch up, now roll back on your sitting bones and draw your navel in, reach up even higher, press through the palms until you feel that stretch in the armpits. Now lift your gaze up, look towards your hands and stretch up even higher. Now level the chin, bring the arms out to a T, reach the hands apart from one another, take a deep breath. As you exhale, take a twist to the right and bring your left hand to your right knee. The right hand comes down behind you. Breathe in deeply and let your ears rise. And as you exhale, look over the left shoulder even a little bit more, breathe in. And out, one more time, deep breath in, letting the spine lengthen. And then exhale, slowly come back to center, reach the arms high. And then as you exhale, bring your hands behind you, press your palms into the mat. The hands are about five or six inches behind you with the fingers pointing towards the back of the mat. On an inhale, lift your chin high, press the palms into the mat. And then press the chest up towards the sky as you press your palms into the mat. Find a nice little back bend. Now lean forward so the weight comes off the hands. Let the arms float up and overhead, reach up high. Bring the palms together, interlace the fingers, stretch the palms towards the sky. Seated palm tree pose, second time. Roll back on the sitting bones and then reach up even higher, really stretch. Now the arms come out to a T, take a deep breath. Then as you exhale, take your twist to the left. Bring the right hand to the left knee. The left hand comes down behind you. Breathe in deeply. As you breathe in, let your spine lengthen. Then as you exhale, twist a little bit more deeply, looking over your left shoulder. Breathe in deeply. The spine gets even longer. And exhale and twist just a little bit more. And then slowly let it go. Come back to center. Reach the arms high. 
Bring the palms together, interlace the fingers. Now bring the hands to the back of the head. Reach your elbows apart from one another. Draw your navel in so you're not overarching the lower back. Now drop the left elbow down, reach the right elbow high. And start to feel that stretch on the left side of the body all the way from the left hip through the armpit on the left side. One more breath, pull that right elbow down a little bit more. Inhale, rise back up, the core engages. Now bring the left elbow down as we move to the other side, reach the right elbow up and notice my right elbow is over my right shoulder. So the right elbow is not coming forward. Now see if we can pull the left elbow down a little bit more and just pay attention to that stretch on the right side body. On an inhale, slowly rise back up, reach the arms high and exhale the arms out to a T. Let's take a twist to the right again. Bring the right hand down behind you, reach the left hand up and look up towards the thumb on the left hand as you press the right palm into the mat. Keep reaching high. Now come back to the twist, reaching the hands apart from one another, the palms are facing to the right, and then come back to center. Reach the arms to a 45 degree angle, and now eagle arms, wrap the right elbow under the left elbow, and lift the elbows up a little bit. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward, keeping a nice long spine. On an inhale, slowly rise. You'll feel the abdominal muscles engage and then release the arms. Reach them high, palms together and to heart center. On an inhale, reach back up. Exhale the arms to a T. Take a twist to the left and bring the left hand down behind you. Press the left palm into the mat. Reach the right hand high. Look up towards the thumb on the right hand. Now reach the right hand a little bit higher. Really stretch up. Now engage the core. Come back to center or actually back to the twist, so the palms are facing to the left, and then come back to center, reach the arms high, and bring the palms to the knees. Take a deep breath and let it go. Do that again. This time lift the shoulders up towards the ears, and then exhale, let it go. One more time, inhale, shoulders up towards ears, and exhale, let it go. Reach the hands out. Actually, bring the right hand back to the right knee. Reach the left hand out. And then move your right ear towards your right shoulder and start to feel that nice stretch on the uh, left side of the neck. If you reach that left hand a little bit more, you can deepen that stretch. Try and keep the chin in a nice neutral position so you're looking straight forward. Now bring the left hand back to the left knee, palm down, and then bring your chin to your chest. On an inhale, lift the chin as high as you can into a little back bend. And as you exhale, level the chin. Take a deep breath. Now reach the right hand out. And notice my fingers are hovering just a couple inches above the mat. Now bring the uh, left ear towards the left shoulder. Keep your gaze forward. And now reach through that right hand, the fingertips on the right hand, just a little bit more. And feel that nice stretch on the right side of the neck. One more deep breath. Now bring the right palm to the knee. And bring your chin to your chest. And on an inhale, lift the chin high again. And as you exhale, level the chin and bring the hands down. Let's come to table pose now. Once you're in table pose, we're just going to move between cow and cat. So inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the chin. And then exhale, pressing the hands into the mat. Draw your navel up as you move the top of your head down towards your mat. Feel that nice stretch in the low back. And do it again. Inhale to cow, dropping the belly and lifting the chin. And then exhale to cat pose, pressing the hands into the mat, pressing the middle of the back up towards the sky. Now continue flowing between cow and cat. You can let your eyes close down. Just begin to feel the movement of the spine in and out. Keep it flowing, noticing the breath, flowing in and flowing out. Couple more times through. Inhaling the cow and exhaling the cat and inhaling the cow and exhaling the cat. That's it. Come back to a neutral spine now. Now press your hips to the left and then press them over to the right and then one more time to the left and one more time to the right. Bring the hips back to center. 
walk the hands forward about four or five, maybe six inches. Now press back towards child's pose, but don't bring your knees apart. Just leave the knees where they were. Now inhale, rise back through table pose, glide the hips forward and down, and then lift your chin into a knees down, upward facing dog. And now press the hands into the mat, lead with your tailbone here, press the tailbone towards the heels. And do it again, inhale, moving up through table pose, gliding the hips forward and down, lifting the chin high into a nice little back bend and exhale and bring it down, pressing the hands into the mat, pressing the tailbone back. We're gonna go through that two more times, gliding the hips forward and then down, lift the head high and then press back towards child's pose, lengthening the spine, feeling a nice stretch in the shoulders and one more time. Inhale, gliding the hips forward and down, and then exhale and press back towards child's pose. On an inhale, rise back, bring the hands back under the shoulders so we're back to all fours, and then come to a seat again. Once we're seated, reach the arms up to a 45 degree angle, and then wrap the uh, left elbow under the right elbow this time, bring the palms together. On an inhale, lift your elbows as high as you can. That's gonna create a nice stretch in the shoulders. Now engage the core, keep your spine long, hinge at the hips and fold forward, bringing the elbows down. Maybe touch the elbows to your mat and then inhale, deep engagement of the core as you rise. And then release the arms, reach them up and overhead. And then bring the hands down in front into table pose, second time here. Now reach the uh, left leg back and reach the right hand straight forward into table extension pose. Press back through that left heel, reach through the fingertips of the right hand. Now point the toes on the left foot and stretch. Find lots of length. Remember to spread your fingers on that left hand nice and wide with the, palm, with the thumb pointing off to your right. Now find even more engagement in the core and then bend the elbow, bend the knee, and bring the elbow towards the knee, rounding the spine, and then exhale and reach back out. We'll do that a second time. Elbow comes towards knee as the spine rounds, and then exhale and reach back out. Let's do it one more time. Elbow towards knee, and then exhale and reach out. Now bring the right hand back down, but keep the left leg up. Press back through the left heel so the toes on the left foot are pointing down. Now rotate the toes on that left foot so they point to the left, 90 degrees, and then bend the left knee and bring it forward, touching the left shoulder if you can with your left knee. Now press the left heel straight back, and then rotate the toes on that left foot so the toes point down. Now bend the left knee so it's pointed or bent at 90 degrees. The toes on the left foot point up towards the sky. Now press your hands into the mat, lift your chin, lift the knee up. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, bring the elbow or the knee rather towards your chin. I always make that mistake. And then press the left foot straight back and then bend the left knee. Now inhale to cow pose and exhale to cat. And one more, inhale to cow and exhale to cat. Come back to a neutral spine. And then press the, reach the left hand forward, press the right foot back, pressing through the heel, stretch, really reach, lots of length. One thing that's really interesting about this uh, virtual practice, this streaming practice, keep going, keep reaching through that heel and reaching the fingertips forward. One of the interesting things is I get to practice most of the time with you. I don't get to walk around and see how you're doing anymore. So it's pretty interesting. It's a big change for me. Keep that going, keep reaching, stretch. Lots of length in the spine. I know it's a long time, stay with it. Good, and now elbow comes towards knee, rounding the spine, and exhale and reach it out. Do that again, elbow comes towards knee. And reach it out. One more time, elbow towards knee, keep pressing that right hand into the mat, exhale and reach out. Stretch, now point the toes on the right foot, reach through the fingertips of the left hand and then bring the left hand down. Rotate the toes on the right foot so they're pointing the right, then bend the right knee and bring it forward, touching your right shoulder with your right knee. And then exhale and press that right foot straight back. Rotate the toes on the right foot so they point down. 
then bend the right knee so the toes point towards the sky. Press your hands into the mat, lift your chin. Take a deep breath. This is tiger pose. As you exhale, bring that right elbow, or sorry, I did it again, right knee towards your chin, and then exhale and press straight back through that right foot, and then bring the right knee down so it meets the left. Inhale to cow pose, and exhale to cat, and one more. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cat. Come back to a neutral spine. Now from there, what I want you to do is step your right foot forward so it ends up between the hands. We've got a little construction noise. I hear it. I hope you don't. On an inhale, reach the arms high, stretching up. Let me give you a side view of that. Reach up high. Press that right knee forward even a little bit more. Bring the hands down so that the hands frame that right foot, then tuck the toes and bring the left knee off the mat. Leave your left hand on the mat, reach your right hand high, stretching up, press the left palm into the mat, stretch the right hand up as high as you can. Now reach the right hand forward so the palm is facing down and press back through that left heel so you feel a stretch in the back of the left leg, really reach. Now bring the right hand down. Then step your left foot forward so the left foot meets the right foot and find a standing forward fold. Just let your head drop down. One more breath. Now bring the arms out to a T. Press into the front of the feet as you slowly rise. Reach the arms high. And then exhale the hands to heart center, pressing the palms together. On an inhale, reach back up. Exhale the arms out to a T. Now swan dive to a forward fold and then come to a half lift. Your hands are at the top of your shins. Press the palms into the shins, reaching your tailbone towards the back of the room. Now bend the knees just slightly and then keep the spine long. Hinge at the hips and fold forward. Bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Now step the left foot back. Right foot follows it. Take a deep breath. You're in plank pose. And exhale, let the breath go. Do that again. A big, deep breath. And exhale, let it go. And one more time. Big, deep breath. Core deeply engaged. As you exhale, bring the knees to the mat. Let your chest and chin follow as you inchworm your way into cobra pose. And then as you exhale, release all the way down. Now rise to table pose with the hands under the shoulders and the knees right under the hips. Take a breath. Then step your left foot forward so the left foot ends up between the hands. Then from there, press into the left foot, reach the arms high into a low crescent lunge. From here, press that left knee forward a little bit more. Really stretch it out. Reach up through the hands. And then bring the hands down so they frame the left foot. Tuck the toes and bring the right knee off the mat. Press back through that right heel. Leave your right hand on the mat. Reach your left hand high. Stretch up. Press that right palm down. Reach the left hand high. Now reach the left hand forward, reaching out of that left shoulder so the palm is facing down. Make sure that left knee is still bent about 90 degrees. Now bring the left hand down. Step the right foot forward, standing forward fold. Take opposite elbows now. Press the elbows down towards the mat. Really stretch out the low back here and bring your weight forward so the weight is in the front of the feet. Let your head drop down and breathe. Now keep your biceps on either side of your ears with a nice long spine, press in on the front of the feet and slowly rise. You're gonna feel deep engagement in the core as you come up. Now reach the elbows high. I'll move back a little so you can see me, hopefully. Reach up high. Now take a little bend to your right, press the hips to the left. Keep the elbows in a nice even plane as if you're moving between two plate, plates of glass. Then come back to center, reach the elbows high and over to the other side. Press the hips to the right. That left elbow is reaching to the left, so you're feeling a nice stretch in the whole right side of the body. Reach the elbows high to come out, stretch up, and then release the arms. Bring them out to a T. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward. Come to a half lift with the hands at the top of the shins. And then exhale, bring the hands all the way down to the mat.
standing forward fold at the front of the mat. Step your left foot back. Now step the right foot back so it meets the left foot. Take a deep breath and let it go. And again, a deep breath in and let it go. One more time, press the thumbs into the mat as well as the fingertips and the palms and exhale, let it go. Now flow through a vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin like we've been doing or chaturanga. Upward facing dog is next. In upward dog, the elbows are straight. The palms are pressing into the mat. The ears are rising up, but we're not bunching up the skin on the back of the neck. Press the navel forward. One more breath. Now tuck your toes and lift your hips and find our very first downward facing dog of this afternoon's practice. Mm. You can pedal it out if you like, bending one knee and then the other knee. Notice how that feels on the outside of the hips as you just move back and forth from one leg to the other. Keep pressing your hands into the mat and remember to reach your tailbone towards the top of the wall behind you. Now come to stillness in downward facing dog. On an inhale, reach your right leg high and then find three-legged dog, opening the hips to your right, reaching that right knee up. Remember to press both hands into the mat. Now level the hips and step your right foot all the way forward so it ends up between the hands. Now step the left foot forward so it meets it, forward fold. Let your head drop down. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers behind the back and reach your knuckles up towards the sky. See if you can let the head drop down just a little bit more and breathe. Bring the weight forward into the balls of the feet. Now press into the front of the feet and rise slowly. The heels almost float here as you come up. Once you're all the way up, pause. Press the knuckles down towards the heels. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, release your hands, reach them high. Keep the biceps on either side of the ears, hinge at the hips and fold forward, bringing the hands all the way down to the mat. Step your left foot back. Right foot's gonna follow it into plank pose. Now flow through a vinyasa. Again, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, upward facing dog. With the elbows straight, the hands right under the shoulders, press the heart and the navel forward, deepening the back bend. One more breath. Now the toes tuck and the hips rise into our second downward facing dog. Lots of length in the spine in our downward dog. Here find stillness, so try not to pedal the legs out. Just concentrate on lengthening the spine by pressing your hands into the mat, reaching your tailbone up and back. On an inhale, reach your left leg high and find three-legged dog, opening the hips to the left and work on stacking that left hip over the right hip. Keep your shoulders square to the front of the mat. Level the hips now, and then step the left foot forward so it ends up between the hands. Right foot follows it, standing forward fold. Let your head drop down. Two more breaths. And one more. Now bring your feet so they're about hip width apart, but parallel to one another. And bring your left hand down about a foot in front of the toes. Now bend your left knee, keep the right leg straight, and reach the right hand high as we come into a standing twist. Hopefully my right hand is over my right shoulder, my right shoulder is over my left shoulder, and my left shoulder is over my left hand. So we got a nice, long, straight line there. One more breath. Now just pick the left hand up and rotate the right hand down. Press the right hand into the mat, bend the right knee, the left leg is straight. Reach the left hand high, and again, look for that alignment as best you can, and the spine stays nice and long. One more breath. Let's do it one more time on each side. Pick the right hand up, bring the left hand down, left knee bends, right leg straightens, press both feet equally into the mat. Notice how you're distributing your weight in your two feet and then see if you can even up the weight distribution. Reach up a little bit higher through that right hand so there's lots of distance between the left palm pressing down the right hand reaching high 
Now pick the left hand up, use the core to bring the right hand down, right knee bends, left leg straightens, reach up through the left hand. The spine is nice and long. One more breath. Bring the left hand down now so it meets the right hand. You're in a standing forward fold at the front of the mat. Bring the arms out to a T, press into the front of the feet and rise slowly, rising all the way up. Reach the arms high and exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale and reach back up. Exhale the arms to a T. Now flip the palms so they face down. Bring the right hand down, reach the left hand up and over, press the hips to the left. Bring most of the weight into the left foot. Can you press your hips to the left just a little bit more? On an inhale, rise, the core engages, left hand comes down, right hand reaches up and over, the hips press to the right, most of the weight's in your right foot. Inhale and rise back up, reach the arms high, and exhale the hands to heart center. Take a breath. Let your eyes close down. And find three breaths now. Two more. Deepen the breath a little bit. And one more. Uh, let your eyes open now. Transfer the weight to the left foot. Let's find tree pose. Pick the right foot up. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left leg. You can bring your hands together if you like in tree pose. One more breath. Let it go. Release the hands, reach them high. Bring the left, right foot down and bring the hands to heart center. Take a breath. Let's find the second side now. Transfer the weight to the right foot. Lift the left foot up. So I've had a lot of things, a lot of time uh, on my hands not teaching classes lately, other than the few streaming classes. So one of the things I've done is restain the fence. I refinished the patio too. So I've done a fair amount of stuff around the house. Almost all those jobs are done now. So maybe I'll have to offer more streaming classes. You release the foot coming out of tree pose, reach the arms high. Exhale the hands to heart center. Then inhale, reach back up. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers behind the back. Press your knuckles towards your heels, bringing the shoulder blades together. But notice there's not a lot of uh, uh, back bend that's taking place. Mostly what I'm doing is just bringing my shoulder blades together. I can even draw my navel in a little bit to avoid too much arching of the back. Now step your right foot forward, just a three quarter step. We're going to come into warrior one. And Bring that left heel down to the mat. Square up your hips to the front of the mat. It may be difficult because of the way we entered this pose. And see if you can anchor through the pinky toe of the left foot. So that pinky toe is pressing into the mat. Keep the hands interlaced. Lift your gaze up so that your chin is nice and level. Your gaze is straight forward. Now keep the spine long as you hinge at the hips. And bring your right shoulder down towards the right knee if you can. And then reach the knuckles up and overhead and let your head drop down so you're looking back at your left foot. Shoulders are staying relatively square to the front of the mat. Now press into that right foot, keep the right knee bent, and rise slowly, nice long spine. Once you're up, press the knuckles towards that left heel, lift your chin, finding a back bend. And for me, I'm looking up at the budding tree Level the chin now, release the hands, reach them high. And exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale, reach back up. Biceps are on either side of the ears. Keep that right knee bent. Keep anchored in the pinky toe of the left foot. Now hinge at the hips. Reach the fingertips forward, coming down slowly. Now eventually bring the hands all the way down to the mat and come up on your fingertips. Take a breath. As you exhale, straighten the right leg and press the right hip back towards the back of the uh, room that you're in. 
or maybe you're outside too. Now pull that right hip back a little bit more and that's probably gonna create a lot more sensation in the back of that right leg. Notice my spine is long and parallel to the mat. So I'm not coming, I'm not bringing my head down towards my ankle, which would require the, my spine round more than I want it to at the moment. Now keep pulling that right hip back, left hip forward, deepening the sensation in the back of the right leg. Now bend the right knee, press the right knee forward, and then back, straightening the leg. Do that twice more, bend the right knee, bring the right knee forward, and press it back. One more time, bend the right knee, and then press it straight back. Spine is still long, the gaze is right down at the mat, so your chin's in a nice neutral position. Now bring your right hand to the inside of the right foot, and then pivot on the right heel, so the toes on the right foot point to the left side of your mat. Bring your feet so they're about parallel, and we come to a nice wide-legged stance. The hands are right below your face, elbows are nice and straight. Leave the left hand right below the face and reach the right hand high, finding a wide-legged twist. Spine nice and long, right shoulder over left shoulder. Now bring the right hand down, put it where the left hand was, reach the left hand high, twisting the other way, left shoulder over right shoulder. The hips can be asymmetrical here, by the way. They don't need to be even or level. And bring the left hand down. Now pivot on the uh, left heel. So the toes on the left foot point towards what was once the back of your mat. Then bring your right foot over to the right a little bit and bend the left knee and rise to warrior one on our second side. So the left foot is forward, the right foot is back, the right leg is straight, the left knee is bent. The hips are square to the front or what was once the uh, back of your mat and the shoulders are squared of the short end of the mat as well. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, press that left knee forward a little bit more. Now hinge at the hips and bring the left shoulder down to the left knee, reach the knuckles up towards the sky, keep that left knee bent, let your head drop down so you're looking towards that right foot behind you. Slowly begin to rise, spine stays nice and long as you come up. Keep the fingers interlaced. Now pull the knuckles towards that right heel as you lift your chin into a back bend. Now I can really see the, the uh, tree leafing out. Release the hands now, reach them high, level your chin. Keep that left knee bent, hinge at the hips and reach the fingertips forward. Now bring the fingertips down to the mat, just like we did on the other side, up on the fingertips, and now straighten that left leg. Pull the left hip back, pull the right hip forward. So we're creating lots of length in the spine and lots of sensation in the back of that left leg. Spine again stays long and pretty much parallel to the mat. So try not to round your back too much here. Now bend the left knee, press the left knee forward, feel that stretch in the right leg, probably the front of the right leg, and then press the hip, that left hip back, straightening the left leg. Do that again, bending the left knee, pressing it forward, noticing where you feel sensation, and then straightening the left leg. One more time, bend the left knee, and then straighten the left leg, and pivot on the left heel, walk the hands back, towards the center where we're in a wide-legged stance again. Now we're gonna walk the hands forward into a wide-legged downward facing dog. Reach your tailbone towards the back of the uh, room that you're in and press your hands into the mat. So we're creating as much length as we possibly can in the spine, feeling that in the hips and in the hamstrings. One more breath. Now, slowly walk the hands back towards your bodies. Eventually, the hands end up under the face. Now, pivot on your right heel. So the toes on the right foot point forward and bend the right knee. Now, slowly walk the hands around to that right foot and then come up on the ball of the left foot. Step the right foot back so it meets the left foot and you're in plank pose. Take a deep breath and let it go. Do that again, a big deep breath. 
and let it go. One more time, breathe in deeply and exhale, let it go. Now vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog. Find two more breaths in upward dog. And downward facing dog, hips are high, stretch it out. Lots of length in the spine. Now bring the knees down to the mat, big toes touch, and find child's pose. Reach the hands forward. I guess my neighbor with the Harley is back. Hopefully he'll turn it off before too long. Find a couple more breaths. And one more. Slowly rise now. And then bring your knees so they're right under the hips. We're back to table pose. From there, tuck your toes and then lift your hips into downward facing dog. From downward dog, lift the right leg up. And then find three-legged dog. Second time on this side, opening the hips to the right, bending the right knee and reaching the right knee up towards the sky. Soften that right foot. It doesn't need to be flexed and press your left heel down towards the mat. One more breath. Now level the hips and step your right foot forward so it ends up between the hands. Nice long runner's lunge. Now leave your left hand on the mat. Reach your right hand high into a lunge twist. Second time on this side. Left leg is straight, and left heel's pressing back. Right knee is bent and pressing forward. Now bring the right hand down to the inside of the right foot. We're gonna to move to a revolved lunge twist. Reach the left hand high. Press the right palm down. The left hand reaches straight up. Now spin the left heel to the mat. Left leg stays straight, right knee is bent, and rise, warrior two. Settle into warrior two, checking in with that right knee, making sure the right knee is pointing straight forward. The palms are facing down. Take a breath and let it go. Do that again. Anchor into the left pinky toe, the pinky toe on the left foot. One more breath and let it go. Extended side angle pose. Bring the elbow to the knee, palm faces up on that right hand. Reach with the left hand and anchor into that left pinky toe again. Feel a big stretch on the left side of the body. One more breath. Now a half bind, bring the left hand behind you so you can connect your left palm with your right thigh and then open the left shoulder looking up towards the sky. Two breaths here, breathe deeply. And exhale completely, letting all the breath come out. One more. Release from the bind, back to extended side angle pose. Then rise back to warrior two. Notice the right knee stays bent. Left hand drops down, right hand reaches high into upward warrior pose. Right knee still pressing forward towards the front of the mat. Now straighten the right leg and reach up and back with the right hand. This is a reverse triangle pose. You're still anchored in the pinky toe of the left foot. Arms come out to a T now, moving slowly. Core is engaged, press into the left foot, reach the right hand forward and then drop it down as we come into triangle pose. Support that right hand, reach the left hand high. Now if you want more energy in triangle pose, in trikonasana, you can reach your left hand forward with the palm facing down. It makes the pose much more energetic. One more breath. Now, if your left hand is reaching forward, bring it back up so it's reaching high. Then bend the right knee and rise to warrior two. Take a breath in warrior two, settling into the pose. Now, straighten the right leg. Pivot on that right heel so the toes on the right foot point forward, or at least towards the left side of your mat. Reach the arms up to a 45 degree angle. We're gonna find eagle arms again. Wrap the right elbow under the left elbow, bringing the palms together. Lift the elbows high and then lift your gaze up. So 
So you're looking up towards the trees that are budding above you, at least if you're in my position. Now bring the elbows down, keep the spine long. Head comes between the legs, inhale, press into the pinky toes, rise up, feel the core engage. Lift the elbows high and exhale one more time on this side and inhale, rise back up. Now release the arms, reach them high and to heart center. Take a breath. And one more. Reach the arms back up and then out to a T with the palms facing down. Pivot on that left heel and bend the left knee, finding warrior two towards what was once the back of the mat. So left foot is uh, pointing forward, their toes on the left foot, and you're anchored into the pinky toe of that right foot in warrior two. Now extended side angle pose, just like we did on the other side, reaching through that right hand, anchoring into the pinky toe of the right foot. Now stretch it out a little bit more so you feel the fibers on the right side of your body stretching. Reach the right hand up and then behind you, finding the half bind. See if we can bring that right palm to the left thigh. Now open the right shoulder up and look up towards the sky. And I say that in class all the time, don't I? But we rarely are actually looking towards the sky. At least for me, I am. I see clouds. What a beautiful day it was. Release to extended side angle pose. And then rise back to warrior two. The left knee stays bent. Right hand drops down. The left hand reaches high. So you can press that left knee forward just a little bit more, creating more sensation in the quadriceps of that left leg. Now straighten the left leg and reach up and back. Reverse triangle pose. You can walk that right hand down the leg a little bit if you want. Now the arms come out to a T. Take a breath. Press into the right foot, reach the left hand forward and then drop it down as we move into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Spine is nice and long. Right hand over right shoulder, right shoulder over left shoulder, left shoulder over left hand, breathe. If you want, you did it on the other side, reach that right hand forward so you're stretching, making the pose even more energetic if you want to, if it's within your practice or if it's something you wanna try. If not, just stay in triangle pose. Perfectly good pose, just the way it was. Reach that right hand straight back up. Now bend the left knee, rise to warrior two. Take a breath. <sighs> now straighten the left leg. Pivot on that left heel, reach the arms high and to heart center. On an inhale, reach back up. Now arms to a 45 degree angle. Let's find eagle arms again. Left elbow under right elbow, palms together. Lift the elbows high. Keep the spine long, hinge at the hips and fold forward, eventually all the way down. Now press into the pinky toes as the core engages. You're gonna feel this in the glutes. Lift the elbows, lift the chin, and exhale, bring it down. One more time, inhale, lift it back up, and exhale, release the arms, reach them high. And hands to heart center, take a breath, and let your eyes close down. And one more. Arms come out to a T. Pivot on the right heel, bending the right knee, finding warrior two towards the front of the room. Bring the hands down on either side of that right foot, then step the right foot back so it meets the left foot. We're in plank pose, breathe and let it go. And again, deep breath in and let it go. And one more time, deep breath in and let it go. Now center your right hand so it's right below the, uh, right in the middle of your mat. And then roll over onto the pinky toe side of the right foot and let's find side plank. You can reach that left hand up to begin. If you want, you can reach the left hand forward, reaching out of the shoulder and maybe pick the left foot up, breathe. Bring the left foot down, reach that left hand back up, then bring it down. Then let's move over to the other side. Center of the left hand, roll over on the pinky toe side of the left foot. Reach the right hand straight up to begin, then reach the right hand forward. Pick the right foot up if you want. Lots of length here. Stretching. Feel the stretch on the right side body. Bring the right foot down. Right hand comes down. Now we're gonna flow through our final vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Two more breaths, stay with it. And one more. 
now. Toes tuck as the hips rise. Downward facing dog, lots of stretch, lots of length in the spine. Hmm. Then bend the knees, bring them down to the mat. Come to hero pose, palms on thighs, elbows in close to the body. How are you doing? Just let your breath start to return to its normal rhythm. Hmm. One more breath. And lean over onto the right side a little bit and then swing the left leg out in front of you. And then bring the right leg back as well. And bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Reach the arms high. And as you exhale, fold forward over the extended left leg. Let your forehead come down towards the knee or the shin. Try to minimize the rounding of the spine. So we want as much length here as possible. If you can, get a hold of your foot, or if not the foot, then the ankle or the shin, and pull your upper body from the shoulders towards the big toe on that left foot. So you're lengthening the spine. On an inhale, slowly rise. Keep the spine long as you come up. I'm going to turn this way to show you what I'm going to do next. Now stay anchored in that left heel and the right knee. Bring the right hand down behind you. And then lift the hips and reach with the left hand. So you get a nice stretch on the left side of the body. Keep pressing into that left foot. And that's it. Bring it down. Bring the hips back. Swing your body around, your shoulders square to the extended left foot. Now fold forward over the extended left leg. Lots of length again in the spine. Now reach the fingertips forward, press into the back of that left heel as you come up. The spine stays long. And then bring the hands down. Now bring the uh, left or right ankle rather to the left knee. And then bend the left knee a little bit. And then lean back so the left foot comes off the mat. We've done this before. And see if you can get a hold of either the knee or the shin or the ankle or maybe even the foot. Spine stays long. Let me turn around this way so you can see the side view. And then maybe point the toes on that left foot, creating a deep stretch in the back of the left leg. Spine is still long. Now release the hands from the leg. Whoa, I'm falling down. Little half a boat pose. And bring the soles of the feet together now. Bring the heels in close to the pubic bone. The heels are off the mat, the spine is long. The chest is rising, the chin is level. Now bring the heels down to the mat. And now hinge at the hips and fold forward as much as you can. Feeling that nice stretch in the inner part of the thighs and the outer part of the hips. Just opening the hips up even a little bit more than we have thus far in the practice. Now slowly rise, keep your spine long as you come up. And straighten the right leg, bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of that right thigh. Reach the arms high, spine is long, hinge at the hips and fold forward over the extended right leg, bring your forehead down towards that knee or the shin on the right leg. If there's too much sensation in the back of the right leg, remember you can always bend your right knee, you can actually bend it quite a bit. Now get a hold of whatever you have access to, the foot or the ankle or the uh, uh, calf and pull your upper body so the head comes closer to the toes on that right foot. Now reach the fingertips forward, press into the back of the right heel as you rise, come up. And then as you exhale, bring the hands out to a T. Take a twist to the left, bring the left hand down behind you, press into the right heel and anchor the left knee. Reach the right hand up and back and stretch. Press your hips as high as you can. Really stretching it out. One more breath. Nice little back bend here as well as a nice stretch on the right side body. Now slowly and carefully bring the tailbone down to the mat. 
Then the right sitting bone reach the arms high and as you exhale, fold forward over the extended right leg. Now keep the spine long as you slowly rise, come up. Now take the left ankle and bring it to the right knee, bend the right knee and then lean back so that that right foot comes off the mat. You have to hold with both hands of the leg wherever you can and then maybe walk the hands all the way to the foot if you're able to. If not, wherever you can is fine. So if you can straighten that right leg just a little bit more, then bring your chest a little closer to that right knee, feeling that stretch in the back of the right leg as well as the outside of that left hip. Now release the hands, keep that right foot up, reach the hands forward. Now bring the soles of the feet together and cup your hands on the outside of the feet and the pinky toe side. Now lean back just a bit and then release the hands, palms face towards one another, straighten the legs. And we'll find boat pose here. Straightening the legs as much as you can. Now bring the arms out to a T, palms facing up, reach the hands apart from one another. Reach the arms high and exhale. One more time, inhale, reach up and exhale. Bring the hands down, fingertips touch the mat and then slowly let your heels float. Reach the arms high and exhale, folding forward, bringing the forehead down towards the shins or the knees. Now keep your chin on your chest, rounding your spine as you rise, drawing your navel in and then bend the knees, bringing the feet back towards your body. And once you're there, slowly roll down to your back. Once you're on your back, let's find happy baby pose. Hands to the pinky toe side of the feet. Relax the back of the shoulders. See if you can pull the tailbone down towards the mat a little bit more. Two more breaths. Breathe the full length of the spine. And one more time. Release the hands from the feet, reach the heels to the sky, legs up the wall pose, press the tailbone down. Now bring your left heel all the way down to the mat, keeping the left leg straight and the right leg straight. Then bring your arms out to a T and bring that right foot all the way over to the left side. And you get a hold of the big toe on that right foot if you want with your left hand. Relax the back of the right shoulder so it's resting on the mat. It's a supine twist. Now take a deep breath in and let it go. Do that one more time, a big deep breath. And let it go. Release the big toe and bring that right foot back up. Keep both legs straight and slowly swap them out. So the right foot comes down, the right leg's still straight. Then bring that left foot all the way over to the right side and let it land. You can get a hold of the big toe on that left foot with your right hand if you want. And then your gaze is off to the left, breathe. Now take a deep breath in and let it go. And one more like that, a deep breath in. And let it go. And let that left leg come back up. Once that left hip lands, just bring the left foot all the way down. And bring your hands down by your side. Flip your palms so they face up. And it's time for Shavasana. Go ahead and let yourself settle into Shavasana. Remembering that this resting posture is, in the opinion of many yogis, the most important pose in a vinyasa practice. So treat it that way. Treat, uh, treat Shavasana with the respect it's entitled to. It's the place where everything 
that you've done and everything you've learned in the active part of the practice settles into your body and becomes part of your experience. Now bring your awareness to your breath. And begin to follow the breath again, flowing in and flowing out. Notice how beautiful the breath is, how soft it's become. Notice how relaxed your body feels. Let the breath soften even more so that there becomes almost no effort at all involved in the process of breathing. It's just something your body is doing on its own. It's so slow and gentle. So unforced. Now when you're ready, bring your arms up and overhead and then stretch your fingertips away from your toes, press the toes away from the fingertips. So big, long, full body stretch. Take a deep breath in now, filling the body with air and then exhale and let it all go. <sighs> Do that again. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the body, stretching through the fingertips and the toes, and then a big exhale, let it go. <sighs> now go ahead and bend your knees. Once the knees are bent, roll to your side and cradle your head and your arm. Pause for just a moment on your side, just letting everything settle. Then when you're ready, slowly bring yourself to a seat. Once you're seated, bring your palms together with your hands at heart center. You let your eyes remain closed down. Take a deep breath in. Feel your spine lengthen as you breathe in so your ears are rising up. And then just exhale, let it all go. <sighs> Do that one more time. A deep breath in. Feel the spine getting longer. The ears are rising. And exhale, and let it go. I offer you loving kindness. May you be happy and well, and may you be safe. May you be peaceful, and may you be at ease. Namaste.